<laughs> Thank you so much. And now we continue in that mode, that beautiful song, into our meditation time. And so I invite you to get things out of your lap and get those feet firmly planted on the floor. Close your eyes if you're comfortable. We'll begin taking some deep breaths, breathing in and breathing out, allowing our body to relax. I invite you now to let your heart and your mind let go of anything that disturbs you this morning. If we want to enter into a time of peace, we can't be holding on to that which causes resistance in our minds or our bodies. So I invite you to let go for a few moments anything that has been troubling you up until this moment. And just let it go. Breathe in peace. Breathe out anything that no longer serves you. Feeling those shoulders relax, letting the chair just fully support your body. And now I'm going to invite you to pretend that you are a mighty oak. You have your place that you stand tall and strong in a forest of other trees as well. You are an established, grounded, and centered, mighty oak. And as you stand there and you have your branches swaying in the wind, the sunlight is upon all of the leaves. You are just being present to who you are and what you are in this moment. And we bring your attention to those roots that go down, way down into Mother Earth through layers and layers of sand and dirt and rock to the mighty waters that flow beneath that nurture this magnificent tree. Just imagine the strength that is there, the wisdom that is there. As you are grounded and centered in the knowing of how strong you are, how grateful you are to have this place in this forest as this mighty tree. And we know that no matter what storms may come, what winds may blow, what weather may befall this tree, that it stands strong in its knowing because of the foundation. The roots of your faith are strong and powerful. And you know how precious and special you are. You occupy a place that no one else can occupy. You express as this tree 
because you are an expression of God. And so we take a few moments and just stand in our truth, feeling and knowing that preciousness that we are in the silence. You were created in the image and likeness of God. That kingdom of God is within you. Not every now and then, but in every single moment, you have everything that you need to bring forth that full expression of God in you. Just as everything in nature knows its place, you know your place because you claim that divinity. You're tapped in and tuned into spirit and you know what is yours to do. And for this opportunity to visit this knowingness, that you are centered and grounded in love, in life, in peace and in strength and there is nothing no condition on the outside that can disturb that unless you allow it in so just as the mighty oak sways in the breeze it remains grounded in the earth so as you are in your life, grounded in your faith, grounded in your knowing. And we claim this now in this moment, that this is the truth of us. And for this we are so grateful. And now we begin to bring our awareness back into this room. Feeling and acknowledging that presence and that power of God that is here always. We say thank you, indwelling spirit. And so it is. And so we allow it. And whenever you're ready, just open your beautiful eyes. Living life from within out. In his book, Unity of All Life, Eric Butterworth tells this sweet little story about this gentleman who had a job, a very good job, for 20 years. And one day he walks in and they let him go. They downsized the company or some such thing. And this man is bewildered. He's like, who is going to hire me at my age? He's going down this, like, spiraling down this negative thing. And so he's, he's just concerned. He doesn't know what he's going to do next because this, he thought he would retire here. You know, 20 years is a long time. And so he's sitting at his desk at home, and he's just sort of brooding about what has happened to him. He just still is, like, in disbelief. And he sees this little spider crawling across his desk, and he sort of just brushes it aside. And then all of a sudden, he watches the spider. And this little spider creates this strand and lowers itself. The strand is strong enough to bear the weight of the spider down to the ground to safety. And he looks at this little spider, and he thinks, my goodness, if this little creature 
can come into its fullness and its awareness that it's going to be okay and move on with its life, what's wrong with me? Perhaps I need to look at what is going on with me and take charge of my life. And he begins to think about what had been unfolding. And, and really, he had probably just been going through the motions for a number of years. He'd been showing up, getting his paycheck, you know, but was he really fulfilled? And so he begins to change his consciousness about what has happened to him. He comes into synchronicity of the understanding that God is in all things and all things always unfold for good. And he begins to not feel so badly anymore. And he realizes, you know, I've always wanted to write. Now I have no excuse. I can write. And he begins to write and he gets books published. Now he's not you know, he's not a number one bookseller, but I tell you what, he makes a very substantial living from his writing better than what he had in his previous job. And just think of all the freedom that he has, not tied to a, an eight to five thing every day. So he gets back into the flow. He remembers the little spider that got into the flow. So can I, he thinks, and he does. He experienced financial security that he had not experienced previously because he allowed spirit to guide him into his next most wonderful thing, right? So this month, we're looking at, in our life wheel, we're looking at our opportunity to be centered and grounded no matter what happens. And part of that, is when we are centered and grounded in our lives, when we are living our five principles, when we are feeling good about how we're showing up in our lives, we feel so blessed and grateful, we come into a place where we want to serve and be of service to others, right? And so that's what we're talking about this month. And so we have an affirmation that we've been saying together this month, and let's say it together. The still small voice calls me to my center of peace. Now, even before I found unity and all the wonderful teachings and spiritual tools that I now have in my toolbox, I always knew, because I was a good little Lutheran girl all my life, I knew how to pray. And I knew about prayer, and I knew about the importance of prayer. Now, I didn't know how to pray the unity way, the affirmative way. But I had prayer in my life, and it came in very handy because the majority of my life, like 42 years of my life, I was married to a firefighter. This man served our city of Austin, Texas, extremely well, and he endured many injuries during the course of his time there, and that prayer work helped me through some of those things that he experienced. And I think about all of those people who sacrificed their lives for others in the 911 experience, and I think about every single day the police, the firefighters, all of those first responders, and all of the military people, all of the people who serve to protect, they're serving their country, they're serving their community, they're doing things. And so I think that not just this day of remembrance, but every single day, don't we need to lift up these ones in our prayers? Because I know it makes a difference. And I know that on a consciousness level, it can be felt. It can be felt in our consciousness when we're being raised up in prayer. So we honor today all who serve. And we all deserve to feel our center of peace, don't we? We all deserve to live from that place no matter what is going on around us. 
and believe me, it has been a roller coaster ride, hasn't it? I mean, my goodness, just about the time we feel centered and grounded, something else happens in our country or in our community, and we go, oh my gosh, I can't go back to my spiritual tools again and do some more work. So I love this definition of God that Eric Butterworth has. He says, God is a sphere whose center is everywhere and whose circumference is nowhere. Think about that. What does that mean for us? Does it not mean that we are the center of God? This is our principle one of unity, right? God is all there is. So if we believe that, then we have to know that no matter what happens, something good has to come from that. That's what omnipresence is all about. There is no spot where God is not. That's our principle one. God is everywhere present at all times and in all circumstances. So at every point you see, at every point there is a flow. There is a flow of universal energy. There is a flow of divine life. And so when you're tuned in and tapped in and you're claiming your divinity, you're in the flow and you're feeling this living from the inside out. I want to take you to scripture today. We're in 2 Timothy. We're in chapter 1. You're familiar with this. It's verses 6 and 7. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. You see, you were made in the image and likeness of God. You have within you that power of God. You are not a victim, right? When you know who you are, you're a powerful, powerful being. And so that gift of God that we're supposed to stir up in us is that innate spiritual ego that lives in us, the image and likeness that's implanted in us from the very beginning of time. So this stirring up is accomplished by letting go of your fears, right? And claiming your faith. The fear is what keeps us from loving. The fear is what keeps us from living fully out loud, isn't it? We fear this. We have all these little things that keep us from being fully present and being that expression of God that we came here to be. We need to be reminded often that the gifts of the Spirit are eternally ours, not just in this lifetime, but from here on out. And they are brought into vis visible expression by our active living faith. If you think you don't have it, you don't have it, right? But if you know that you have the faith and the love of God living in you, as you, and through you, you express in the world that way. To me, this scripture says that we have everything we need within us to find that deep abiding peace that we also want in our lives. We just need to remember who we and what we are and how powerful we really are. It's everything that Jesus taught in the New Testament. All of his teachings about the kingdom of God is within you. We know it in our heads, but have we integrated it into our hearts? Do we understand it, that we have that kingdom within? It's been taught by all of the masters for many, many years long, long time ago in China, Lao Tzu was teaching. He was teaching that anyone who flows as life knows the secret of the universe and needs no other power. All of the great masters taught the same sort of message. So there are basically two different views about when we come into this life. One is that we come in sort of as an empty vessel and we're gathering experiences. We're gathering, 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 learning, growing, right? That sort of thing. The other one is that we come in as this infinite soul, ready to release and discover 
how we came here to be as expressions of God. Now, I don't know about you, but I think a lot of people are living in the first one because they are letting pretty much whatever is going on in their lives rule how they feel. You know, things are happening and they're reacting. Things are happening and they're reacting. Instead of living from the inside out like, a, like an infinite soul that has come here to release your splendor, to release your gifts and talents, you see the difference in that? In the first one, we are on a roller coaster ride because we're affected by everything that happens around us. But in the second scenario, we have that peace of knowing that we are divine and that we have complete dominion over how we see, feel, and think about everything that unfolds in our lives. There's a really big difference. In the second scenario, you're more likely to have peace in your life because you don't react. You go, oh, I wonder what this is about. Breathe, go to your center. You know what I mean? We have spiritual tools that we use to keep us in that flow. We don't have to be part of that roller coaster ride. So our job, you see, is to let go of the strain that we have created and the resistance we have created to the things that are happening in our lives. We have to allow that flow to unfold for us. So we let go of the resistance. So to me, living from the inside out, living from within out, are people who embrace the Jesus teachings, who understand about the kingdom is within, because then you're more fulfilled. And then when you are fulfilled in your life because you know you have everything you need, everything you'll ever want is already here, you're just getting yourself in the flow with it, right? You're staying in, tuned in, tapped into spirit. You're paying attention. And when you're in that place, then your heart is more centered and grounded and you want to be of service to others. And so I want to invite Carol Johnson up here to share with you because she got tuned in and tapped in to be of service and she's going to share with you now how that has unfolded for her in her life. Thank you, Carol, for being here today. I'm so happy. I want to make sure this microphone is, is I'm, right. I'm for you. short. Is okay. That, does that work? That works. <laughs> okay. Hi, I am Carol Johnson, and I have worked for over six years now at the Peace River Wildlife Center. I'm sure most of you have had a chance to be there. <laughs> have you been there? Yeah. 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 Great place, right? And I know Reverend Donna and her granddaughter have been there, and seem to have enjoyed Love it, it. <laughs> immensely. Um, for me, I get to work with wildlife and taking care of uh, patients that obviously can't take care of themselves. That in and of itself is very rewarding. I've uh, gone as far as watching birds hatch out of eggs and then we take care of them and until the point where they can be released out into the wild. And again, I keep using that word rewarding, rewarding. It just, I'm so blessed to be there and be part of it. Um, our purpose there is to rescue and rehabilitate and educate. So uh, the education center is down here at Ponce de Leon Park. If you haven't been there, please come. Um, I personally get to take care of the residents. What happens is when they are brought into us from rescue, they are uh, tried to rehabilitate. There's occasions where nothing can be done and they are not viable to be returned to the wild. They come down to Ponce de Leon Park and it's their forever home, which is just wonderful. How exciting and thrilling it is to go into an enclosure and be within 10, 10 feet of bald eagles. You know, uh, I. Could, um, how long am I allowed to talk? Yeah, a couple I could, because <laughs> once I get started, I go. <laughs> That's for sure. But uh, in and out of each enclosure, it's very special. Um, one thing that I get total pleasure out of 
one of many things, is we have a, a fish crow that was uh, someone's pet, and it's very uh, friendly, and so talks. If you've, you've been down there and heard something go, hi, it's the crow. <laughs> did you yeah. see it? Yeah. yeah. Did you did it's you hear awesome. him say hi? Uh, actually, I said him and it's a her, my bad. But when I go into that enclosure to feed, I, that particular bird will be on a branch and I can put a little piece of food on my shoulder and he comes and takes it. You know what that does? It gives me goosebumps. <laughs> it really does. And one other thing I think of um, is our pelicans. Um, juvenile pelicans when they go through a certain growth period, what forms on their back is a perfect heart of Aww. feathers. And every time I see that, I think, God, <laughs> you know? It's, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, it truly, truly is beautiful. So I can't, like I say, I would go on forever and ever, but if you have the opportunity to volunteer, we can use them down at Peace River, but anything that warms your heart, if that's working with other people, um, any any venture, the reward is so worth just giving a couple hours a week would be absolutely wonderful. So thank you. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> okay. We feel your enthusiasm. <laughs> your enthusiasm is contagious. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to tell you that in a way, our church serves as well the community by giving to local charities. We also uh, tithe 10% of everything that comes in to this ministry goes to one of the unity organizations to support the people who support us. So I believe that that keeps us in the flow because we are serving, we are giving all the things that Carmen does with the outreach team in our community. All of those things are because we are so filled up, aren't we? We're so grateful for all that we have. We have so much in our lives and many do not have that. So it feels so good to give service to do for others it lifts us up and it keeps us in the flow did you feel the vibration of her excitement when she's sharing that's what serving does for us and we can only do that when we are good in our own lives you know when we realize how precious and special we are and how much we have then we're able to share with others i know this uh, is so true because this week in our board meeting, one of our board members shared how it worked uh, for her in that she had taken her car in for repairs and knew what it was and told them basically what it was. And then instead, the car repair place did all these other things before they went to that thing, right? So they, you know, handed over like a $2,000 repair bill when it should have been a third of that, right? And so instead of going and raising Cain and, and, you know, getting bent out of shape, she just went into prayer and meditation about it. And lo and behold, a few minutes later, the owner of the shop called and said, you know what, it's only going to cost a third of what we originally said to you. We know these principles work. We know that this works when we can stay centered and grounded. We can create our lives to be so much easier and simpler. So we don't have to be sitting cross-legged in an ashram somewhere chanting Om to be peace. We can be peace wherever we are. We can be peace in every single moment. It's um, interesting even when you're traveling, you can take your, uh, like when I went to Costa Rica, I took my journal and took my things that helped me in my daily practice. Wherever you are, even when you're not at home, you can be centered and grounded. You are expecting peace. You're looking for peace. You're knowing that you are peace. And you know, serving doesn't mean that you have to do some big job someplace or take on the world. 
You serve when you witness a friend who has a struggle and you listen with an open heart. You serve when you smile at the Walmart greeter. You serve when you're being kind to anyone, anywhere. You're serving, so it's, it doesn't have to be a big deal. But that's what living life from within out is about. And it helps the whole world to be a better place. Okay, enough preaching. Time for a little joke. So there's a little girl. She loves to walk to school every day. But this particular day, it's a little stormy, but she makes it to school okay. She does fine. And then when school lets out and it's time for her to come home, the storm is rolling in. The clouds are there. It's like an electrical storm. There's lightning. There's some thunder. There's no rain yet, but it's like an electrical storm, and it's kind of noisy. And the mom's sitting at home, and she's thinking, oh, my gosh, you know, I wonder if my little girl's going to be scared. And she decides after she hears a big bolt, sees a big bolt, she gets in her car, and she drives toward the church. She knows the route the little girls take. And so she goes, and all of a sudden, she sees her daughter over on the curb. And she's watching her. She's driving along. She's watching. And every time there's a bolt of lightning, her little girl looks up, smiles, and goes on. And it happens again. And so she pulls over to the curb, and she gets her daughter over there, and she says, what is it that you're doing? How come you're smiling at the lightning and she said oh mommy I'm just trying to look pretty because God keeps taking my picture <laughs> I know I know I love that too <laughs> I want to close today with a Charles Fillmore quote from the book that Jim Gaither wrote the essential Charles Fillmore there's this quote in there that I want to send you out with today I am now free from every belief that might in any way interfere with my perfect expression of health, wealth, peace, prosperity, and perfect satisfaction in every department of life. To me, that's what it means to live life from the inside out, and I see that for all of you. God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now is the time in our service when we get to give from our good back into the community. So I invite you to get your tithes and offerings in your hand as we prepare to bless them. And all of you that are online uh, or will watch the service at a later time that use PayPal or Breeze, we bless your gifts as well. Together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, that this is so. Now, Cindy has another song. Here we go. <laughs> 